I went through like this crazy period where I just was internalizing all the stress, taking everything on. And my go-to mechanism is always to kind of bear down and, and get through it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and this has just been from sports and just that mental toughness kind of discipline of being able to kind of weather the storm while it's in front of you. Right. And like just internalize it. Uh, but then applying that same concept towards an ice bath will just destroy you. <laughs> That's a good point. It, it does not work to bear down and try and like struggle your way through it. You have to, to, you have to relax. To relax. You have to find that calm state. Uh, and the breathing obviously is a big portion of that going into it, learning how to do that. But like to, to, to be able to have a different stress response, I think is insanely valuable for people to understand. What's up? Welcome back, everybody. Here's the giveaway for today's episode. The RGB bundle, MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic. You can get that for free, uh, but you got to do this. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. That helps us with the YouTube algorithm. Um, and subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to the RGB bundle. Now, why am I giving away such a crazy bundle? Here's why. We have a crazy sale going on right now. All MAPS programs, every single one, 50% off, okay? So you got to use the code MD2022 for that 50% off discount, and you can use it repeatedly, so there's no limit to how many MAPS programs you can use that with. Just go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code MD2022. Also, in this episode, you hear us talking to uh, Ryan Dewey, who's got a great cold plunge company. We actually have one here in the studio um, and we talked him into giving us a discount code. So if you're interested in getting a cold plunge for your house that uses filtered water, really nice stuff, um, go to thecoldplunge.com and then use the code MINDPUMP and get $150 off. All right, here comes the show. Ryan, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, we talked off air a little bit about the kind of origins of your company. You said it started or kind of got kicked off during COVID. So let's talk about that a little bit and talk about Plunge and what, what happened with that. Totally. So we we launched in September of 2020. My co-founder, Michael Garrett, and I, we both own float spas, sensory deprivation facilities. So I'm up in Sacramento. He's in the Bay Area, East Bay, San Francisco. So we became buddies through that. And then, you know, COVID hits, world shuts down. We had to shut our businesses down here in California. And so, um, which was challenging. Everyone kind of went through that, but then it was this unique moment in time that we actually had some time. So I was living in Sacramento. Mike decided to move up to Sacramento prior to the pandemic, which was just some serendipitous thing that happened. He moved up. He's this, he's an engineer at heart. Um, we were all into cold plunging, cold therapy, doing it. He had the chest freezer. I was hitting the rivers multiple days a week, going to facilities. And he just started working on it in the garage. And we were like, it's pretty fucking sick. Like this mm. is, we're, we're excited on, he kind of pitched me like, Hey, do you want to do this with me? It took me a little while to kind of come to a couple months to kind of see the evolution of the product. And then September we're like, let's do it. And so we started off, we basically just emailed our email lists from our float spots and we're like, Hey, we're going to build 20 of these out of his garage. Who's interested. Mm. And we, we picked 20. That was just a number. We're like, cool. We can kind of build the units together go through that process, hand deliver them, get to know our customers. And we didn't know if it was, we didn't envision like a massive growth company that we were going to enter into as more of a passion project. Like a hustle to get you through this pandemic, maybe? <laughs> That's totally it, man. It was like, and we, there was a, we did think there was a fit in the market at the time where the price points were. No one was really doing this. We kind of kept looking at ourselves like, has no one really done this? Like, do we? So it's a home, like, yeah. cold plunge Huge device. growing market though, right? The Massive. Cold plunge? It's it's growing. Yeah, so it's an at-home unit. That was kind of the, the, that's what we created. It's a direct-to-consumer unit that fits into your house. It's cool looking. It's not your standard chest freezer. It's men and women both like the look of it. It's self-cleaning, um, gets down to 39 degrees just always it's basically on demand cold water so it has a filtration system um plug and play basically fill it up with a hose plug it in set your temperature and you're good to go wow. so that was kind of the the innovation that we did at the price point that we did everything else was around nine to ten thousand and up on the market and so we we were like if we can do this around five grand all in to be able to sell this retail 
then what, let's continue down with this business. And pretty cool. Cause I remember, um, just those horse troughs, right? How much ice it takes to fill those things up was mind blowing. I remember going to back and forth to the <laughs> store and it still wasn't enough, you know, like, bro, to, it's to, crazy. To it it's up. like 60. We've done the math. It's like 60 bucks a day. If you're going to do that plus time, plus gas, yeah, like, and it's like and everything else that might work once a month. But it's like it's if you want to do this daily, which right. we're real big on, is the practice of it, the right. consistency of daily or at least three to five times a week. Then that's like that's the that's what this unit. Well, for. and then you see the other hack that everyone does right now, which is the freezers. Right, they try and convert the freezers, but then that stuff gets nasty. Right, you don't have no. Have way you done to, it? Have you seen one? Have you? Yeah, did you yeah. have one of those? I didn't have one, but I've been in one before, and it's like. You know, it's you can only use it so many times before you got to change the water, man. Yeah, you got to yeah. clean it all out. And it's a headache, like, and it does, it has it was one set temperature that it goes to. It's like, I mean, it, it could get you by, but it's definitely not ideal. So it's there, it's a dude thing that goes in the garage. That's like the wife's usually like, "What the hell is this thing? Like, right. this like keep that away. You can get electrocuted in it if you don't <laughs> unplug it. Like, it's not safe. It's definitely not built for a human to be getting into. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. So, what was the response? You sent it out to twenty people. Did they all, did you get a good response or? Yeah. So we, we sent it out. We had a few purchases right out of the gate. They were like from our community, like, yeah, I'm in, I'll buy one. Da, 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 da. So where it really took off was we decide our company name is Plunge. It's kind of a joke because no one really knows what our company name is. Is it Plunge? Is it the cold plunge? Are you cold plunge? Like our company name is Are Plunge. You a plumber, there so? it is. <laughs> 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 Whatever. But on our website, we're thecoldplunge.com. Like that's how you go to our webpage. Okay. And so we realized no one had, no one was dominating that on the internet. If you typed in cold plunge, it was directing you to some other health and wellness company. That's so we're wow. like, man, this is- Huge opportunity. This term is just not, doesn't come along very often where we think a term can become something really big and mm -hmm. we can kind of own that. So we bought the coldplunge.com, turned it on and in dude, our first month, we were, we didn't pay for anything organically first ranking on Google. Wow, and so wow. that was like, we started to get traffic into people that were just searching for cold plunge. And then we had a pretty slick website at the time. It looked good, but it was Mike and I building them. He's out of the garage. And so people started calling in like our cell phones thinking we're some, Oh, I've been, Oh, I didn't know you guys existed. Mm -hmm. How long you guys been around? I want to, you know, purchase. And so people start purchasing and, you know, from there it just kind of grow. And now we're, we just moved in this week to like our, I think our sixth facility. Wow. In wow. the last 20 months. Six <laughs> facility. Oh yeah, yeah, it's, bro. It, it's been insane. I mean, it started garage <laughs> in one of our deliveries. We met a guy in Sacramento. He's a buddy of mine, but he had a bike shop. We moved into the back of his bike shop. Two months after that, we moved into like a warehouse, about 3,000 square feet. We thought that would be home for a while. Then it was 9,000. Then we rented another 10,000. Now we just moved into 40,000. So it's just been a... <clears throat> Super. You know, now are you still doing the um the float side of the business too, like simultaneous to the cold plunge, or did you guys just sort of abandon that and move? We were able to I have stepped away as like CEO of that side of it. And my business partner's taken over on that. So mm. it's that Capital Floats is running well on its own, has great management doing its thing. <clears throat> Mike's still a bit involved in reboot, but he has good management. I mean, we're pretty much full time like co CEOs on on plunge, which is taking up, it's, you know, it's a massive growing company. So the float centers are, thankfully they're doing well. They're more established companies that we're not, it's not a lot of our time right now. Yeah, You know, yeah. before we get into like the value of, of, of doing this and using this as a practice, like I, I want to talk about like the, the transition from bankrupt losing every, cause you had locations mm -hmm. of, of these, <clears throat> these float tank facilities, probably doing well, obviously you have multiple facilities and then out of your control, you had you couldn't stop it. You had to shut everything down. Add a business. The mentality to switch to a brand new business mm -hmm. instead of being like, yeah, I don't want to lose money again. Let me go do something. Let me go work for somebody. Like, what's that? What was that like? Man, it was hard. <laughs> like, as anyone would expect, it was you know, cap floats was cruising. It was good. I think I got pretty comfortable with it, and it was like, oh, this is established. Cash flow was good. Shut down. Um, that was a real unique point personally for me. I was actually going, my partner and I who are, who are together now, we broke up at that time. So I went through a breakup. My only real main source of cash was dried up. I remember cat floats. We were literally down to, we, we were, we were about a couple days out from just not having any cash. Wow. Um, done deal. Trying to get customers to stay on. Hey, stay a member with us. We'll, 
we'll make you right at the end. Like if you guys can keep your membership. So, you know, luckily a few people stayed on. I was in this unique spot of, I sold all my stuff and moved into an RV to kind of downsize. Wow, like, cause man. I just had no, like money was getting tight. And I was like, cool, I have a little cash. I'll buy this RV and I'll just cut my rent out and I'll live in this RV and use this time to, to do that. And so that's when Mike was developing the product. And I remember Mike looked at me at the beginning and we were both clear on this of like, dude, how are we going to make this like a win? Like this moment in time that sucks. And there's a, there is a, there's an opportunity on this side. What are we going to do about it? And he was really adamant with that. And that really stuck with me and to see his development. then he just started like, I'm just going to dig in and work on this project. Like, and I'm going to build a cold plunge and I want to really want to 3d model it, source it, figure it out. And so to see his development of it and to kind of know like, okay, something's here. There's something on the other side of this was when we decided to go into it, but it was, man, that was a, I'm sure like everyone in the world, it was, that was a really tough season. Yeah. Were you, were you, so you had your business before, were you an entrepreneur for most of your career? Is this something that's like inside of you that, you know, working for yourself? Now it is, Mm -hmm. I think being, I'm sure you guys can attest, like being out on your own. It's like, once you get that, you taste that it's like, there's no going back. Um, I never viewed myself as like an entrepreneur. I actually, you know, I worked at the San Jose earthquakes prior to this. I was in professional soccer, like a pretty corporate business, uh, front office side of it. And then I just had to, for capital floats, I just decided I had kind of a personal journey that I went on, had a really bad accident, which has been like a greatest gift of kind of like waking me up to be like, what are you going to do with your life? Like, you know, almost died in the motor, motorcycle accident. And then I just decided to go off and start cap floats because I learned, I started floating because of the accident. Oh, I see. And so it just developed into like, this thing's incredible. I just want to start one. I didn't view myself as this like entrepreneur, like business guy that would go do that. It just was more of, I care about this. And how do I like get more people to do this? And then I was like, oh, this could be an opportunity. So that's just where it blossomed into that. I don't think I wouldn't have viewed myself as like full full blown. That's super interesting though. Can you go into details a bit about that accident and like- Totally. Yeah, how that all happened? Yeah. So I was, um, I was with a buddy. We were traveling th- through Thailand, um, motorbike accident <clears throat> night before new year's Eve of 2012 and hit a, hit a sharp turn. Don't really remember it. Got knocked out. Um, woke up in a hospital They had a speedboat me to the other Island. Cause there was no like actual care to get me on that for that, on that side of the Island. It was like basically broken jaw in two, um, which was the main thing. And like a pretty severe concussion, brain injury. Um, then it was, I, luckily I had the most incredible care out there. It was like insane. If anyone needs like surgery done, like, like planned surgery, dental surgery, shoulder surgery, like Thailand is an incredible place I've to heard look that. at. What? I've heard it's that insane, from people. Dude. I would never think that. I yeah. heard that. So my friend, uh, I, 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 there's, there's fighters out there. Obviously they have a huge Muay Thai, oh, yeah. um, you know, culture there. And uh, a bud of mine opened a, a a kickboxing but he says that he's like man if you get injured you need surgery like it's cheap and good which Bro, i've heard that so my you know this all just happened on a fly like i get there they get me to the other island it's like we got to get surgery on this guy da, 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 da. so there was really no choice so i'm just kind of like surrendering to the experiment experience like okay I've gotta have surgery kind of find out my surgeons like ucla trained he's i end up coming back after about a month out there in the hospital, get out here, top oral surgeon in Sacramento looks at my, the work done. He's like, I can't dream to do work this good. Wow. And so I'm like, yeah, he's, he, I mean, it was a full on through the bone hanging by two, oh, wow. like oh, God, put it be, like back together. I mean, so, and you look at the, I mean, the pricing was insane. This was back in 2012, obviously costs have gone up. I mean, I think I walked out of there all in, there was like a $20,000 bill. Yeah. That's, but, that's but, like $200,000 here. Probably. So Bro, it would have been at that time, probably at least a half million. They yeah. said really half like this was all that they, this is speedboats to other islands. This is a merge. What, what Island were you on when you, I was on Costa Co- Copenhagen. Oh, and then they took me to Costa Mui. Yeah. So I've and been there. It's gorgeous. It's incredible. Oh yeah. I, I, I saw very little of it. It was like the <laughs> night, it was the night oh, before haze. new year's yeah. Eve. I remember I was in an ambulance. They were trying to get me down 
onto the boat to get out. And it was like the night before New Year's Eve, Copenhagen's crazy party island. People are like banging on the ambulance like <laughs> through and I'm like going in and out of like like consciousness, like kind of like, what is going I'm on? I'm missing like, the party. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I, it's, just take me wherever you're taking. I didn't know what was happening. Um, but yeah, took me there. Kind of had this moment in the, in that the first night when the accident happened with my buddy. He's, you know, I'm going in and out of consciousness, but I remember looking to him and just being like, dude, I, I needed this. And he kind of looks at me like, Okay, I don't Wait, know in that doing. moment you, you said that? That night in the hospital when I was like laying in the hospital. Do you bed. have like a spiritual experience or what was I it? I just had this moment of like, it was just so clear. Of, it was again like this COVID thing. Like, and this is something I fully believe in. This is like deep in my ethos. It's like when these like wild moments happen that can be such like, like they're challenges, but they can be viewed as like a very shitty situation. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, this is a gift. Like this mm -hmm. is a just, I don't know where that comes from, but it was, it's very clear of like, dude, this is going to be like your life purpose right here. Like you have this accident, like, how are you going to heal from this? What are you going to do from this? And, wow. you know, get that moment of like, like your life's now a gift. Like you get this second chance. And I sure. remember it being so clear in that moment. And then, you know, I was in the hospital about three weeks, a month out there, finally flew back, slowly came back to my job. And then it was like, from there, I really wanted to go. I, I had this vision or not vision, but dream to always go work with ayahuasca. I don't know if you guys mm -hmm. are familiar with that. It's yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Psychedelic medicine that was, you know, this is again, 20, early 2013. It was like, I had heard it on the Joe Rogan podcast. Mm -hmm. Like no one I knew do, did this. Where now it's like a more predominant thing. We all yeah. like friends and okay. family that have maybe done it. But I was like, I'm going, I'm going to the jungle. And so remember, I couldn't even tell my parents. I was scared to tell them. Like I told a couple friends, I was just like, I'm doing it. I'm going down there. And so that was like the journey of by getting ready for that over the year, I started floating. And oh. so I had the neck and back issues. So I was like, I'm gonna get in the float tank and I'm going down to the jungle for this like ex spiritual inward journey. And I need to get to know myself a little bit more. So I thought the float tank was like a great, great place to go start that. And then very quickly it was like, oh my God, I want to start a float center. And so it's just been this, like, it was just breadcrumbs leading me to, like, the journey that I wanted to. Isn't that weird? Like, it's you can wild, look, You can look back and you can be like, this led to this, led to this. But when you're in it, you don't know where the hell you're. You just have to have, I guess, trust or faith that, okay, well, this is going to lead me somewhere that I need to go. That You nailed it. I mean, it's the faith of what's happening, how it's going to play out. And it's like, not even, I didn't think of it that way. I didn't think of like, oh, there's some grandiose plan. It's just like, I'm just kind of doing the next thing that like felt good and like where I wanted to and go. And what's interesting about that is float tank businesses. It's not the first thing you think of when you think of starting a lucrative, successful business, right? But it, it wasn't that for you. You just said it did so much for you. Like, I love this. I have a passion for it. Let's get started. Is that? Is that, that was how it started. It was literally, I was in there my, Second or third float in San Francisco. This very, it's called Float Matrix. It's like in a basement down there. It's not open anymore, but very unique spot. And I remember being in there and just being like normal people coming in and out of this place. And I thought float tanks were such this like alternative world of people. And it was just like, you know, normal lawyer dude walking out, yeah. mom walking out. I'm like, who, like, this is cool. And I remember just sitting there like, I could just hang out. I was in the waiting room. I was like, I just want to be in here. And it was like this, thought just his voice came in and was like, well, then go create it. So that was, I was literally going to create a place that I would just want to hang out. Mm. <laughs> like it was, and then I started to, okay, you're actually going to do this. Then building a business plan and being like, okay, this, this pencils, this is, this could work. Like there's not many out there. I think this is a similar to cold plunging. I thought it was a, a modality that was gaining speed and traction and mm -hmm. more and more people were getting into it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that was kind of where that, that came from and started. And so it didn't start from like a, I knew the money would get figured out Yeah, and I wasn't doing it to become a millionaire. Yeah, it was yeah. like, I, if it could pay my bills and I get to hang out here, I'm stoked. Now, now what was your experience with cold plunging? So you're doing this, you're off, you, you, when you started the cold plunge business, you had already done it and gotten value. Like how did that start? And what did you see from that? Yeah. So plunge started in 2020. I got into cold plunging and got exposed to it through Wim Hof. Like most, most people. Um, I remember watching, the Vice documentary in 2015. Um, I think one documentary of the year. I remember watching it like, who is this guy? You know, it wasn't just about the cold. It was like who he was mm -hmm. and what he was. Superhuman. Superhuman, man. Like, and just 
like I, I watched it. I cried that night. I watched it again the next night. I cried again. And I was like, this guy like is creating something or opening a pathway that is just not, that hasn't been there. Like an actual control of our, like we are in control of our immune systems. We are in control of our health. We are in control of our stress response. Like that was so foreign, like that's becoming a more common accepted thing now. But in our Western world, like five, six years ago, that was not, no, it was that's, like, that's woo, man. It's that's woo. Weird. Exactly. He's crazy. And even if he's, a, he can do it, he's an anomaly. We have no control over that system and that we are, yeah. we're a victim to that system more or less. And his, his journey of being ridiculed. And I was just more inspired by that. Like yeah. that guy took so much heat and to finally like prove it in the, in the, in the places that he did it in the clinical settings was like, you know, I took it as like a big fuck you to the world, but he was <laughs> man of love and was like, no, cool. I'm glad you guys see it now. More people need to do this. Exactly. Now. Like, and and so that was like my introduction to it. And then I just started getting into to cold therapy. We had a facility in Sacramento that you could go do it. So I was going there all the time. And Did then, you notice any effects, like positive effects initially from first use? I wasn't. I saw like mood elevation and like energy and and just overall like um, I'd say mood elevation was yeah. like the bit. The I biggest. say vitality. That's how I feel from. Hundred percent. Okay. I feel like you're like electric after and yeah. kind of. What I didn't get into it. It wasn't till I started doing until I got my own unit at my house was really when I started seeing a lot more of the plethora of benefits because uh, of the regular use for the regular use. Okay. So that was more the consistency involved. So like for me, it was, I mean, I just got my levels tested the other day and I had, um, two very unique things. So I've been plunging every day for about 15 months now. So right before that, I, so I hadn't had really the unit had my, you know, standard hormones and everything tested, but my T levels doubled this last year. I was already pretty low. Granted that was coming through when plunge started. Like I lived in the RV stress yeah. was out of control. So I was, I was already pretty in the dumps, but testosterone doubled this last year. And this, these are results I just got like three weeks ago and my immune system, I did the uh, true age testing. Mm. Um, and my immune system was seven years younger than my actual age. And that was like, and my, my biological age was like one year or like my cellular age mm -hmm. was like one year but my immune system was about seven years younger. And so that was like, I really attest that to the breath work with Wim and cold plunging in general. That's what I noticed the most, nice. the immune system. I, w I used to get sick all the time. And we when we first started the podcast, we were all doing the hot cold therapy. And that, w I like, that was the best period of time in my life of not getting sick was when I was consistently doing it. Mm -hmm. And I'm, and I've been inconsistent since then. And I've had, I've been sick a lot more. And I'm like, I keep telling myself that's half of was half the motivation of like <laughs> seeking you out and like finding, I'm like, dude, I need to get one. So I have no excuse. I need to have one here so that I just start doing it every day yeah. because I saw the benefits on how, just how little I got sick when I did. Yeah. The, the, you know, it's interesting because, um, we know that if we <clears throat> allow our muscles to atrophy, we don't use them and they shrink and get weaker, that causes illness, chronic disease. We know that this can happen with uh, our minds, right? If we don't test our minds or stretch our consciousness, have conversations with people. But we forget that our ability to tolerate temperature is like a muscle. And I mean, for most of human history, we didn't have air conditioning, right? We were hot when it was hot. Uh, we were cold when it was cold. Mm -hmm. And to some extent, we would help ourselves so we didn't die, but we experienced lots of fluctuations and your body actually acclimates. So for people who don't ever do this, like if you use a sauna or you use a cold plunge, it gets easier over time because you, you're, you're able to tolerate it over time. And there's a lot of old cultures that have done this. So my, my wife, her ex-husband's family was from Ukraine and Russia. And she talked about how like they would do a cold rinse with the kids at the end of a bath. So you have a baby, you give a baby a bath, you rinse them off with really cold water, which you would never do to a baby here. Yeah. You know, one year old, I'm not going to people you know. think it's like torture. Then there was a video she showed me of like school kids in Russia and they're, and it, it's like recess time. It's snowing yeah. outside. They, they went out in their bathing outside, suits and yeah. their bathing suits and they're spraying them with water and the kids are playing. And I, as an adult would cry if somebody did that to me in the, mm -hmm. in yeah. the cold. And, and so it's pretty crazy. It's this old practice and we never exercise it. And so, yeah, we kind of stepped in. I mean, our culture is like, don't go outside in the cold. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's like, you're going to get sick. And it's like, that's a complete misconception totally. of it. And I think it's, I mean, getting the, it's very fast. I'd never heard that about the kid with, after a bath getting cold. Yeah. But I mean, like Andrew Huberman talks about, it's like the cold actually increases our like 
readily available dopamine in our body, Mm -hmm. which is like a fascinating thing. So it's like you talk about the mood elevation. It's like makes sense to get a baby cold. It's like, yeah, it kind of like gives this like level of happiness that increases right there. Really interesting. With your with your customers, what are the things that you hear the most from the I mean, it's I think the easiest thing to notice if you've never if you've never done cold rinse in the shower, you you could just try it like that, like cold ass water, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. it's better than a cup of coffee. It really, it lasts longer actually for me. I get like this energy boost that lasts for a good four or five hours. Coffee only lasts for maybe two or three for me. So that's the most obvious, but are you hearing anything else from customers who are using your, your plunge on a regular basis? Yeah. I mean, we, we see like the workout recovery is massive, yeah. you know, just inflammation in general, like, you know, Rich Froning is one of our partners. And now he, you know, the guy's probably the biggest end of recovery in the world. You know, it's, he's, he doesn't work out. He's actually into recovery is how I view it. Like he works out twice a day, but his, yeah. the rest of his life is recovery. Mm-hmm. And this is like a tool that he swears by and it incru- pre- improves his sleep. That's a big one. So it's it's the inflammations there, like the post-workout, but I think it actually improves your sleep, which I think has the more of the downstream effect for everyone. So that's massive. Um, you know, the big one is like stress. We just hear in the simplest form, I'm a better father. I'm a better mother. I'm a better brother. Like, and that's more to do with, I think, people learning stress response better. Yeah. So they're actually getting more used to adrenaline, shock in their body, and learning how to breathe through that. And then in turn, the downstream impacts are we're just better humans. Mm. So that is, to me, that's the top piece that's sitting right there, is mm-hmm. understanding how your nervous system works. It's a manufactured environment that you're going to get in and get an adrenaline dump. And that is, it's rare to get that. Adrenaline internally is the exact same if a lion's running after you, if someone's trying to stab you or you're getting in a cold plunge. Your body has the same exact system on the inside, but it's a safe environment to get in there and actually be like, okay, how do I breathe when I'm getting stressed out, when you know my, my boss is yelling at me or I get an email that works me up? Like You can learn to look at those cues within the body. And I think that is the to me, the most exciting, the biggest thing that I've noticed into mm-hmm. it. And I do it every day and I do this process of my body goes through the shock and learning to breathe, mm-hmm. regulate the body. So that that's a that's a massive one. I can we definitely hear. attest to that. I mean, just anecdotally, uh, I went through like this crazy period where I just was internalizing all the stress, taking everything on. And my go-to mechanism is always to kind of bear down and, and get through it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and this has just been from sports and just that mental toughness kind of discipline of being able to kind of weather the storm while it's in front of you. Right. And like just internalize it. Uh, but then applying that same concept towards an ice bath will just destroy you. (laughs) It it does not work to bear down and try and like struggle your way through it. You have to, to, to relax, to relax. You have to find that calm state. Uh, and the breathing obviously is a big portion of that going into it, learning how to do that. But like to, to, to be able to have a different stress response, I think is insanely valuable for people to understand. Cause then from, from me going from that and I did Wim Hof, it was where I got exposed to the, to the cold plunge and this kind of introduced me to that concept. Uh, but it's, it's done tremendous things for me in terms of not having actual physical pains and, and tightness and, and knots. And, uh, you know, a lot of these things that were building up a lot of anxiety in my life, uh, just being able to respond to all these stresses differently. How did you figure out it's super intuitive to know, like to surrender into the experience? Did you get kind of coached through that or was that something that you picked up with your body? Yeah. So it was like, I mean, it was partially, I think it's when you're doing these breathing exercises, getting like that hyper oxygenated state, like you just kind of, you feel calmer. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was actually just, I, I guess I, I just had kind of an epiphany while I was in there that this isn't working. <laughs> and I'm like, cause you bet, you bet your ass he tried. <laughs> I did. I tried to, to, to bear my way through and it was, it, there was no way I was going to be able to do it. And I saw everybody else that had like prior training to that, uh, be able to stay in longer than me. And it was just getting in my head, you know, like there's something else there that's in why whatever I'm doing isn't working. And so, yeah, I just kind of just conceded and, and, uh, and then I could stay in there for, it felt like almost forever once I figured that out. Yeah. How long do you recommend people you like go in for? 
it depend where they're at in their process. And what I mean by that is like, if you just starting out. Yeah. Let's walk somebody through like a journey. Let's pretend that someone's like, okay, you guys got me sold. Yeah, I, I, just need, I need to get one, one of these things. Like, yeah. So if you ordered a plunge, you have that coming in. I would recommend setting your temperature between 55 and 60 degrees. And I would go shoot for two minutes okay. and just indefinitely be there. Like just stay there until you're like, you know what? I'm getting a little comfortable. I'm going to lower it by two degrees. I'm going to go in an extra 30 seconds. Like that's where you can mess with this is the dose and duration. I think two minutes is a good baseline in time. It's always when you cold plunge, it's like the first 45 seconds are going to be the most challenging. It's going to be that time that your body, the mind's yelling, get out. You're just, you haven't quite adapted, but your nervous system will start to calm down. So if you can get past that 45 seconds to a minute and hit that two minute mark, then you're really getting a lot of the benefits. So starting out, I would say two minutes, 55 seconds. And just like, don't play the ego game. Don't go 39 degrees in five minutes. It's like, I always liken it to the gym. It's like you're, you're not going to go do, if you haven't been working out, you're not going to go hit a CrossFit workout no, with, no. with you guys, or like, you know, you're not going to take someone through a crazy workout. It's like, no, let's just get your body moving. Let's just get you back to your body. That's your, it's the same system that with your nervous system and your autotomic system, it's like, you actually just need to adapt it to start and get a little more used to it. You don't want to burn out. Like I, this is like a super long game. So 55 seconds, two minutes, and then just start listening to your body. Go, okay, I can go a little bit longer. Let's go. And I always like to count, put the timer on your phone, but count by breaths. How are your, how are you controlling your breaths? Like, are these, are you getting a controlled, you know, five second breath of, or is it, is it really shallow in your chest? Mm. Like uh, notice the difference between those two breaths and can you start to get it into, you know, can you do 60 really controlled breaths? Like go through that process. Um, so I would, yeah, start with two minutes, 55 seconds and just build from there. And if you don't have a plunge, I would start with a shower. You know, everyone has a shower. It's a great time. We're in April right now. If you're in the U.S., still a lot of cold, or what are we, we're in May now. Um, still a lot of cold water out there. Just get in, turn your shower on. Do 10 set to 10 breaths. Try and get to 10 controlled breaths, either hitting your chest, crowning your head, or turning your neck around and doing the backside of your neck, right between like where the hairline and the uh, your shoulders are right there. Um, and those would be the starting points. And then just like slowly build on it. Slowly build. You hit it perfect because we talk about this in, with fitness all the time. That's the biggest mistake that people make on their fitness journey is thinking like they're all motivated. Okay, I'm going to do this they're thing. All in. And they want to go all in right away. And it's like, that is a terrible Counterproductive. Approach. Yeah, totally counterproductive. Yeah. When's so, the best time to do it? I would assume the morning. I prefer the morning because I like to just do it. Mm -hmm. Like I, for me, that's how my routine works. I do breath work to start and then I get right into the plunge. It's the first thing I do. I like it. it. For me, I kind of can wake up lethargic. So it just kind of accelerates me in the morning. If you tend to run really warm at night, uh, it might be good to do it right before bed. And like wow. a lot of people are nervous with like, oh, it's going to give me so much energy. And it's like, I I haven't seen that. That's That's been the thought. But every, everything from my experience with watching people that do it before bed, they don't get energy. It's also really good that, you know, your body naturally, I think, needs to lower about one and a half, two degrees mm -hmm. to get into deep REM state. So you can kind of do it. It's a hack. You can get your body temperature down, fall into REM state a little quicker. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the afternoon coffee that you might reach for, the afternoon power nap, go get in a plunge. Um, yeah, that's when I would use it because we have it here. And, you know, I when I'm done, that's when I get my dip in energy, two, three o'clock. I'm like, oh, I want to go to sleep. That'd be the best time, I think, to jump in there. And yeah, I want to try it right before podcasting because we haven't done it right before podcasting. I totally. Think, I think it would make me really sharp. You think we can all three fit in there at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we we did get the extra large one. Here's the, <laughs> here's the little hack with the plunge that we're starting to see catch a little traction is head dips, face dips. Oh. So holding your breath for like however long you can go. Obviously, do it with people around Wait, with you. your body in there or no, just, dip just your head in? No, just dipping your, your face because it sends, it's obviously not full submersion, but it sends the response to the body. Mm. So you're getting this like actual, like we're seeing it. We're seeing customers come back and like I plunge full submersion in the morning and then I go at three o'clock in the afternoon and I do a 30, like a 20 second face dip. Oh, wow. As oh, opposed to getting my whole body in there and I'm back out and wow. I get this like. 
Oh, energy. that's kind of and, so. and, the, and the filter in there just keeps it clean, right? Yeah. Because, so, you know, if I go in after, you know, Adam or Justin, I want to make sure yeah, that. We're get all the, <laughs> well, with all of that, you might catch anything. You know what I mean? Filter out cell grease. <laughs> no, it's, 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 yeah, it's got the cell filtration. I mean, my unit, it's my girlfriend and I, we use it and it's, um, haven't changed the water in seven months. Okay. So oh, that's just, awesome. Now, how, what, what are you at now? Because you've been using it for a while. So what's your temperature? In, in I'm time? very, like I'm at about, I think ours is set to 45, 46 degrees. Mm -hmm. um, I go for, yeah, three to five minutes. Yeah. You know, what's interesting about the story is that uh, hindsight, right? We're going to look back now and it's all going to make sense. But in the, in the moment, I'm sure it was like, you're stressed out. But you started this uh, straight to consumer kind of health you know, based business right when people like this, there was a massive spike in people buying home gym equipment and exercise stuff. And we're still in it, by the way, it came down, but we're still, I think exercise equipment still selling at 20% higher rates than it was pre pandemic. So a lot of people now are, and at one point I remember people were selling like dumbbells on what's that place on Facebook where you can like buy Facebook things market. marketplace. Oh, it was like $200 for like a pair of dumbbells. Cause it was like no supply and the demand was through. So you guys, uh, you guys probably saw like this spike right out the gates, right? Yeah. I mean, we're still trying to figure out what our, I mean, we're just, we've been growing. Like we're still trying to figure out what the pattern is, what the, yeah. what the trajectory is. Um, it's a new, it's a new niche market. You know, it is health and wellness, but there hasn't really, this cold exposure is, is pretty new. Mm -hmm. Closest thing we can look at is kind of what saunas have done over the years oh, and kind sure. of that, you know, you oh, higher sorry. price point item, what they are. So we're, we're, we have a bit of seasonality. We've noticed that over our 20 months, it's like, you know, when it gets cold, less people want to buy cold plunges. Of course. <laughs> so, but you know, spring Still hits, the cold. <laughs> spring hits. Now it opens up to the whole country, the whole, you know regions that are just like, I have a lake, I got my pool mm -hmm. yeah. now they're, you know, so we see it uptick, but we haven't, I think we're still at a spot where the market's just expanding and the awareness is growing. That's the biggest thing is like more and more people are getting these at their homes. They're seeing their lives change. So it's like, Oh shit, this thing works. Like it's not just some like cold water. That's like, Oh, I do it in my bathtub. It's like people doing it consistently. It's like, no, this is my like this is my go-to tool that well, I have now. I figure you guys hit a few of those. Uh, you know, the market was kind of shifting. The awareness was out there. Um, oh my god, I just forgot. What I was. Well, I <laughs> you need more. Ryan, no, Ryan, you were you, you're you're friends. Or are you guys working with Kelly Starrett, Aren't you? Yeah, Kelly's Kelly's a real okay. Good friend, so I yeah. just came across a video of him doing the plunge, and he did this thing where, and I don't know if you've seen him do it or not. I hope I'm hoping you have, so you can maybe explain what he's doing. Where he gets on that bike, dude. I did it with him. Okay, so explain Wait, what what is, what is he what is he doing? Like he, uh, there's something he's doing. Like he was, I I can't. He called it something too. I don't remember what he called it. I think we called that one um, bloody ice. Called bloody ice. Thirty seconds in the cold. Thirty seconds on the the bike, and all you gotta do is try to hit a peak wattage in thirty seconds. So just make it work and just keep it body moving. Yes. Was the, yeah, that was sounds the, fun. So what? we went to his house and he put us through this. Um, you can find it on like RIG or YouTube pages. But it was, you know, we showed up. We're like, Kelly, he's been like, I got these new rad ways I'm incorporating the plunge into my workouts. We're like, okay, let's check this out. And so his thing was 30 or it was either 30 seconds or a minute in the plunge. And we were going 39 so we were there and then we would hop off and do 30 seconds to a minute um, full speed on the assault. So you're going assault bike, plunge. Assault bike. So my Mike and I did it together and we would just trade off. Mm. And you'd get in between. And what it's, what it's doing is first, it's just fun. Well, it's got to make it. Got, it's it's got to <laughs> be increasing the diffi dude. difficulty of you to calm your breath down because you're elevating your heart rate like crazy yeah. on this bike, and the, then even hard. The breath you're... is the breath is key. It's also it's, I believe it's called like uh, shunting. So it's like when you plunge, mm -hmm. your your blood your vessels constrict. Mm -hmm. So your blood it's actually protecting your organs. That's what's taking place. It wanted to, okay, we're in a un, it's a challenging situation. Let's protect the vital organs. So blood is restricted at that point. But then you get back and get on the bike. And so your blood's kind of like there, but then you're opening you back up and getting blood flow. Could to you start feel hitting. this? Oh yeah. You start to get like stiff throughout. We did about six rounds. Um, I mean, I just felt, I mean, first off you feel off just, I felt great after yeah. it was like fun. I got like a bit of, I got a workout in my, my energy's at a whole other level. 
you know, I've been in the cold for that long. So it's, I don't know exactly what it's doing. I don't know if Kelly would sit here and be like, this is exactly what it's doing. But he's just like, this is doing something to the body that's pretty special. Yeah. And it's a fun experience. Have you seen the studies on the cold gloves? Like people, remember the one where they put Andrew Huberman. Yeah. 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 I wonder if you get a similar response where you get like more stamina, more endurance. I think you do. doing that with athletes, right? Yeah. You know, Andrew has, he's been one that kind of brought that to the forefront. There's a company out there now that's doing it. Yeah. Um, and I haven't tried them, but based off of his studies, it makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, what's interesting too, is that, cause I hear people will say, um, don't use them right after your workout because the cold reduces inflammation, which reduces the, the muscle building signal that you get from exercise. So it could reduce what's called muscle protein synthesis and muscle building. And, and that's true on its face. However, what if you take that and then work out more intensely? So, in other words, work out and train in a way to where if you didn't do the cold plunge afterwards, you'd be slightly overtraining. Then you kind of get the best of both worlds. So, what it does, it allows you to train with more volume, higher intensity, you know, more frequency because of the anti inflammatory, immediate anti inflammatory effects post workout. So, if you do your normal workout, which is, let's say it's perfectly programmed, yes, you may get like this reduced, maybe muscle building response. But if you counter it with more volume or higher intensity and then do it, now you can get the best of both worlds. And I've been talking with people about this who have been doing this. And they're like, dude, I can work out harder, yeah, faster, get more longer. volume, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. yeah oh. So now I get more practice with my training right. because this allows me to get away with it. Well, yeah. I remember what I was going to originally ask you is mainly based around the timing and everything and how mm-hmm. that plays a major factor into to success. Um, and in terms of like the market awareness and all that kind of stuff. But now, uh, you had mentioned to us earlier about like getting on shark tank mm. and like what, what, prompted you guys to, to, to move in that direction in terms of trying to get on the main stage yeah. now? I mean, did they you re- call them or they call you? They called us. Wow. Oh, they called you guys. Okay. Yeah. So they called us. Um, I always wonder how that happens. If how many people are like trying to get on there and how many do they like, seek out? And yeah, I think it's pretty rare that they reach out. Like, oh. you know, everyone that we've talked to it. Yeah. And, I don't want to say super rare, but I, I think it's more that people apply. I would imagine. Um, but they reached out to us. This was last summer. Um, and we were like, yeah, we're in, we're interested. It wasn't like, Hey, we want you, you guys are on. It was like, would you guys be interested in applying? Oh, I see. And so we're like, yeah, we're in. And so we went through the application process, super intense, like more documents and paperwork and signatures than you really. Know. Oh, it was, yeah, it was some of the most I'd ever been through. Wow, um, that's wild. And so we did it and then you kind of get paired up with a, a, you know, casting team and they work with you and then you kind of, you know, they're looking at financials. It's a, you know, they're a, they're, it's a first class show, like into the real, real authentic into like what they're actually trying. They're really about entrepreneurship, capitalism in general, and just get showcasing companies that are, um, you know, innovating. So we we got on. We eventually got the approval. We're gonna come down. This was uh, like last September. Yeah, it was last September. We we shot with them, shot the show. What was that experience like? Man, it was it was. was it you know, have you ever been on racking at all? Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, no, I did. I had no experience like in you know done podcasts and things like that, but never anything like that to that level. We show up. We got our own trailer. There's a psychologist on site. Like psychologists, uh, are they trying to keep you from getting too nervous? Or yeah, something? it's like in their you know little conversations prior, but it's mostly after. Like you know, if who bombs? Okay, let's send the psychologist <laughs> in to, to talk to them and just cover their ass. Yeah, to like exactly. like kills themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah but our, our okay. psychologist, like we are, the experience was great for us. It was adrenaline was insane. I'd never had an experience like a, with adrenaline actually like that, where it was like, I didn't do anything except stand there and talk, but I'd never been so tired and exhausted in my life. Oh wow! Yeah. Like I, I think I blacked out part of the show. <laughs> like I was never been so hyper-focused and equally like, I don't remember parts of things that happened. And Mike, my, my co-founder, we did it together was similar, but it's a pretty like, you know, what you see, obviously the show gets cut down. We just aired this last, you know, this last week. Um, our segment was, I don't know, eight minutes. 
and it's actually about 45 minutes that we were out there with them. Oh, wow. So there's a lot that just wow, doesn't get... Wow, that's a lot of talking right. with them. It's only go down to eight minutes. On camera, too. And, totally. You know. And so it's... It, which is cool is like once you go out on that floor, it's like we have the stare down. It's like a 30-second stare down. It's like just us and the five sharks just standing there like... And it's, you know, in the huge run Sony at the Sony lot, massive, you know, stage that it's at, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of cameras like all over. So we're just staring at them. Who's was your was, favorite shark going in? Yeah. And so, it was it different afterwards? Yeah. Did it change? Yeah. So we had our sharks were Mark Cuban, um, Barbara, Mr. Wonderful, uh, Lori, and Robert. Okay. Oh, nice. Main ones. That's a good yeah, yeah, one. Yeah. We had the five. Yeah. Some main ones. Right five there. ones. We, man, we thought it was up until that morning before we went on, we thought it was Kevin Hart that was going to be with us. Oh yeah, because that's why we thought they reached out. Like, so we were because he has his like cold as balls series, uh, yeah, yeah. like, oh, okay. and he's into health and wellness, and he was a guest shark this season, and so we were like, we were convinced in our minds, like yeah, Kevin, maybe. like our pitch was like geared towards him. Like, we were thinking about like <laughs> Kevin comedy, oh, bro. like we we were in, and then it was like, oh, he's not. like it was like mind blowing to me that he wasn't there. I was oh, like, wait, God. why are we here if Kevin Hart's not here? Uh, like, anyways, so we we end up going out. Um, and it's like a true experience where it's like, they say go, you walk through the doors, you do your, hit your mark, you stare at them for 30 seconds, do the stare down. And then the director just says, go again. And then it's just open. And then it's like, we do our, our actually it's our two minute pitch. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. I'm Ryan from Sacramento and my, mm -hmm. you know, we do our yeah. shtick. Yeah. And, and then it's just like a, it's just us and them. We're and just like, asking questions. As, it's just like truly like nothing scripted. And it's just like with a cadence, you know, you're getting to this negotiation. You did your equity ask. Um, and then they just dig into like who we are as people, our past, our companies, um, the story. What are, What's the product all about? Like why? Did you tell your motorcycle accident story? No, we didn't get into that. Oh, that um, sold it for it sure. Was, um, sold it played we, the drama. We, we played to the COVID. <laughs> not played, but we, we got into the COVID story yeah. of like, hey, this business came out of Cause this, we shot this in September, 2021. So still a lot going on. Yeah. And so we were, you know, Mike, his business has shut down. He went and built this unit, worked with his dad on this out of the garage. So there was like a lot of like sure. heartwarming part that was, didn't get into the episode. That was like a big thing for our story. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, it's such a bizarre, surreal experience where it's like, Oh man, like I'm actually negotiating my company right now. Like, could you guys imagine negotiating uh, your whole Everything you've built, like in front of five, like the all the cameras watching, and you have to get off that stage within 15 minutes and come to some conclusion. Yeah. It's like this takes like months yeah. or weeks, or like there was one moment it's like, can I talk to Mike? They're like, Yeah, go off. And so like I turned to Mike <laughs> and we're like whispering. Everyone probably thinks we're like saying something really intelligent. And he's like, I don't know what the offer is. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, what is even the offer? And I was like, okay, like, I don't really know either. Like, cause Mr. Wonderful's was some offer that I didn't even understand. Oh, um, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah so, so it, it's interesting because you, you might not have even had the idea to have an investor come in when they contact you. Like, do we want, I mean, do we even want an investor? I'm like, well, it's going to get, I'm, I'm imagining right. you're probably thinking great exposure. Yes. We're on TV. You know, if we bring one of them on, maybe they can bring on, you know, more other people and mm -hmm. get us more national and okay, but what would that be worth? Like what a, did you guys agree at going in? Like, okay, we're not giving away more than X percent of our yep. company. I but imagine that's what I would do. If we so, were to yeah. if we were put in that position, I would sit with these guys and go, Okay, yeah, we would I don't come give up a shit what they bring to us. We're not giving away more than this. That was exactly it. So we had hit okay. our it was our number that we said we would not go past. Um and you know it a lot of the things that aren't negotiated on the show, it's it's more of a, you know, you enter into diligence after the show. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the things, there's so many other factors to being a partner. You know, it's like, yeah, we discussed equity, but we also had our equity number. And then on the back end, we were like, what is important to us is like, what kind of partner are you going to be? Like, what are you going to bring to the table? Like, what is actually like, is this true silent partner? Are you like actually going to promote it, promote it. Exactly. Yeah. And be a part of our, you know, like if we ever like run a commercial and I want to use Mr. Wonderful, hundred percent, right? like all that. So we, um, so yeah, we had our number on the equity side, which was kind of came down right to the end with Mark and Robert were in a battle oh, they were. Off, uh, for the offer. Oh. Um, 
And it was cool. Robert plunged on the show. So that was like a oh, really wow. cool moment. I mean, the fact that you even had them doing that, that's Big cool because you. a lot of the guys get on there, there's like, they don't even, I'll pass, pass, pass. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So we we ended up having, I mean, we we had four offers that came out. Wow. Um, now, did you get what you wanted? Did you pass yeah, them all? We, we did. It ended up working. It was a little different. We got a credit line and we're still kind of in how it works is still talking in diligence now and going through that process with the with Robert. Um, but we got a credit line and equity mm. out of it. So we ended up walking out with like 2.4 for 12%. Um, for okay. that was for us at that time for a year in was like an exciting, yeah, exciting yeah. offer for us. And so when you're done, when you guys leave and like, fantastic. Fuck, like, all right, don't jump and high five yet. Let's walk out the building. <laughs> yeah. It was like, I mean, man, it, it was, was so like slow mo of like, what just happened? Did I just agree? Like, did we agree to this? Like, is this like, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's like, is it's this real or yeah, is this all 100%, yeah. man. And then they're coming out and it's like cameras are all over us. And then we have to go in another room and we're like, they're asking us all these questions. Like, what does this mean for plunge? And I'm literally like, I can't, I don't have nothing else to give right now. Like, I don't know what this means. Like, I don't know what just happened. Um, but yeah, we, you know, we, we wanted, we cash for like purchase orders and things, you know, it's a product based. It's like, so it's always like, on to the next. Like mm -hmm. we, it's, that's the thing. We didn't come from this background of product, like manufacturing background. So it's, it's been new. It's a quick learn for us to be like, oh yeah, sales are good, but we need to be projecting six months from now. Yeah. And we need to be buying product for six months now. So that's been the big journey for yeah, us. A big nightmare is not having enough product to meet the demand. If you do that, then you're screwed, right? You could totally ruin your reputation. <laughs> reputation, you know, the, I mean, right now we're still, we're at about a 10 week lead time on our product and we're working, we're working really hard in, in this new space. Big part of moving into this new space is like being able to up our production. So we expect in the next six weeks, that's really going to start coming down. But, you know, it's been, uh, like we bootstrapped this, this was Mike and I, like yeah. we did it together out of the garage. And so we've just really worked really hard of everything we've earned. We just are buying as much as we can for the future. And, you know, some, some securing some back end financing loans that have been some short term, like kind of um, more aggressive loans to be like, how do we fund this company and get <clears throat> for the growth that we need? But yeah, that's been those yeah. are the exact same challenges that our our partners PRX dealt yeah. with because they did Shark Tank also and mm. that same thing, just building out, being able to project it six months out. They had a long. A lot of people don't realize that because they see a business. It depends on the business, of course, but they look at the business and they say, "Wow, they're bringing in so much revenue. They're they're just rich." And it's like you don't understand. Ninety nine percent of that oftentimes is reinvested so they continue to grow yeah, so you keep and up. set themselves up. Otherwise, you your your business is destroyed. 100%. A lot of people don't get that. Right? So what what happened when it? What I'm curious about, and what I never got a chance to ask the PRX guys was, did uh, did the show make an impact? Really, did you see anything as far as orders? Like I've always wondered, like man, but just getting on that show, does it really make a, a big difference? Because now the awareness, and now everyone's searching. Like, I think the verdict's still out for us because we just aired. I mean, this was three four days ago. Okay. Oh wow. So it's so we early. it's super new. I mean, we're yes, sales have increased. Okay. Sales have increased. We have, I mean, it's more the wake of the show. The show's just a beast in the sense of articles that come out now. Oh, sure. So there's like all these blogs and, mm. you know, all the publications that they own, that oh, ABC. And so there's like articles. I didn't know that. They so it's it like, out. it's a massive hit on our SEO front. You know, you type it. Now we're forever as seen on Shark Tank. So it's going to be, you know, it's really important. It brings a level of credibility. Yeah. Right. Um, so that. That's huge that we're we're excited on and yeah. with that. Did you put that on the website too? I don't, is that on the website? I think it is now. Okay. Yeah, it's it, it's up there. We we have like a should have a doc up there. Um, have you seen that on any of your social channels? Like any increase there? <clears throat> we have, and we just we just came on with a new um, agency that's working with us on that, and they've been incredible. So we've just seen kind of upticks in general. We had a lot of go, good momentum going into Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. We've kind of been on the company's been rising really really quick. So we're. It's, you know, what is Shark Tank? What's not Shark Tank? I mean, Tank? You're, I, I know why you're hesitant mm -hmm. to answer because we st we still to this day, we're like, what? So going on seven years in this and, you know, we've been in fitness for 20 years. So obviously we're very familiar with the industry, but we still have not been able to tease out like the some we've been on this growth trajectory for for seven years. So it's hard to predict. Like, so it's hard to say, like, are we feeling that because of the January wave that we yeah. should feel? Or yeah. is that just because we're growing right now and we had this great article that came out or this episode that went viral? So mm -hmm. it's when you're in, I mean, it's good. It's a good problem to have, right? When you're in growth mode like that, 
sometimes I'd say it's one of the harder things, uh, I think as owners sometimes to tease out like, okay, what is really working? Because a lot of stuff is working and going in the right direction. And it, that to me has been the curious. I would love to get your guys input on that. It's like the challenge. Cause we're building this company. And wanna, we're more into like building a healthy company. We're not like a venture funded company. That's like, we'll build into it. Like mm. we want to run like a good, healthy, profitable company, like build as we go, but we're also in this rapid growth phase. So mm -hmm. we're trying to hire, you know, for, the company that we're getting into, but it's also like, I don't, we never quite know where we're going. Mm. Yeah. And so it's like, how do we build this efficiently, effectively and not get too ahead of our skis Yeah. that if, you know, the cold plunge market kind of stabilizes and yeah. it's like, this is what it is like mm. that we're not out. I think the hardest thing I think, and I always say this when people ask me like, Oh, what's the hardest thing about mind pump? And I say, you know, the hardest challenge is uh, knowing what to say no to. Mm. The, when you're in that growth phase like that, there's so many opportunities that arrive and there's so many great things that are happening and, oh, we need to work over here. We need to get more of this. And we need to do more of that, like you said, over your skis. And it's tough to know what you should say. You know what? Pump our brakes. Not yet or not now or mm -hmm. no. You know, not no forever, but no right now. Let's let's focus over here on these things that we know for sure and we'll stay there for a little bit and then that'll still be there. And so I think we've gotten better at that over the last seven years of recognizing that because early on we were like what squirrel squirrel most? squirrel like yeah. every, everything was like oh we gotta do this now oh we gotta do that now it's oh, so exciting it You're is like the, is. The, this cool kid and you feel like you feel and so i i totally get that and i think yeah. that's where we're kind of maturing into that spot now of like okay like let's ground in a little yeah like what is the direction that we're wanting to go as opposed to yeses across mm. the board what's the relationship now i mean i was kind of early but with the uh, with robert right is he involved or more silent or what's that going to look like? We're figuring that out. It's okay. kind of in like a diligence period. So we go back and forth financials and kind of what that, I mean, it's like I said, the show's like a real handshake mm -hmm. that takes place. And then on the back end, um, you enter into more of the details of it. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of at that spot right now. Interesting. When you look at, because I thought what you said earlier was really smart. You looked at the sauna, the home sauna market as a potential model. I think that's brilliant. That it sounds like that would make the most sense. And saunas are more established mm -hmm. uh, than, than, and you know, same, it'll appeal probably the same customer, same type of similar customer. type of customer, mm -hmm. similar type of price point. So it was because the sauna wasn't something we're actually going to launch a sauna. We'll be launching a sauna probably end of this summer. Oh, uh, okay, cool. Oh, cool. So that, and that wasn't, we love sauna, but it wasn't like, Oh, we're going to get into create a cold plunge. Then we're going to create a sauna. It was like our customer base was like, Hey, I'm already getting this. I'm getting this. Do you have like, are you guys building one? And we're like, no. And they're like, cool. We'll send us to a company. We'll buy that one. And so it just kind of, and we just started getting so much feedback on that of like, we would love for you guys to go create one. And so then we have been in kind of design mode for the last six months and we're just finalizing the, the design. So anyways, the, the sauna market is, um, yeah, I mean, that's been the model that we've kind of looked well, at. Well, how big is the home sauna market versus, like, yeah, I know the plunge market is very small, still kind of growing. So yeah, I mean, they're, they're incomparable. I mean, the, the the plunge market is is a sliver, sliver. Yeah. I mean, because we're really the... F well, also, it's not very comfortable. Yeah, it's, 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 it's <laughs> yeah. totally, man. Yeah. Like, it's that, a, that's, that's, like, let's that's go a relax. factor. Let's go yeah. relax in the plunge and have a conversation. Right, <laughs> I'm going to have a drink and just... Ah! Yeah. That's the thing I love about our customer base. It's like you bought something that you know is going to suck. Yeah. <laughs> like it's yeah, like, totally. it says something about your character, right? Totally. <laughs> it's like, I, I get it from the gate. Like, uh, yeah, I'm down yeah. with you. You like, probably have a lot of high performing executives. Totally. And, yeah. That's massive. And it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, started off more predominantly men transitioning a lot more with women, women getting involved into it, um, which has been really cool to see. Um, My wife will plunge at like 79 degrees. That's freezing, you know? <laughs> Don't turn it down anymore. How, how did you, uh, you and Sam Parr connected too, right? Yeah. yeah. Sam, yeah, yeah. That's, who, that's what linked us, That's right? originally who linked us. So yeah. we're we had him on the show a long time ago. Got it. A big fan of the hustle and stuff like that. And I reached out to him um, because I, I heard a podcast where he started talking about a house that he was building that he wanted to do, which was literally what we had talked about for years. So for years, we had talked about creating these kind of like almost like mind pump experience houses where we use all these cool things that we're all into and we outfit the house in it. That's and it's sick. like a short term rental place. And we got into real estate almost three years ago now. And our first short term rental in Park City is being built as we speak right now. It'll be done in July. 
and that's going to be the first one. And I heard him, and I'm like, I hadn't heard anyone talk about this yet. Are and you guys it, building out like the experience? Yeah. 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 So yeah. everything yeah. from the cold plunge to yeah. a sauna, gym, jacuzzi, sauna, deal, movie yeah. theater, gym, like everything therapy. in it. Yeah. yeah. So it'll have all Picture that. Justin in the kitchen. <laughs> 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 but uh, right over the bed. <laughs> I, I I didn't know yeah. he was doing that. I heard that. That's what made me get reach out and uh, reach out to you and stuff that. So how did you guys originally get connected? So Sam, I've you know I think I followed him on Twitter. Sam put out a tweet about cold plunges and I just like hit him up. I was like, yo, like, let me get, let's get you set up. Oh, wow. And he was like, all right. And then we just started like, you know, wow. That all, that's wild. And then it was started going from there. And yeah, we had like got his unit. I remember there was like a, a issue with his unit and I was like, fuck. And so like, we, <laughs> we got it, we got it fixed. And you know, ultimately it's, and he just, I mean, what's been cool is, you know, we've just kind of been text buddies through it, but he's just, he's like, I'm addicted. Like, you know, and he's just all, Oh, he's, he's all like, about it. Yeah. And it's, it's cool. I think that's the best part with, you know, Sam or everyone that we, like they get it. And they're just like, dude, this is, yeah. I can't, I can't travel anymore. Yeah. Like I can't leave. I can't get away from my cold plunge. It's really, it, it's really, uh, I mean, I do cold shower cause I don't have access to a plant. Now we do, but, um, I, I love it. It's, it really changes my mood is what it does more than anything. My mood going in versus my mood going out, very different. I do like the sauna to the plunge or sauna to cold. That's the best. So doing sauna makes perfect sense. I would have them right next to each other mm -hmm. and go right from, you know, 20, 30 minutes of the sauna right to the cold. And that's, to me, that's the best feeling oh, yeah. in the world. You have the time for it. I mean, that's the, once you're hot, there's nothing more inviting than to get into totally. cool your body down. It's just yeah, natural totally. to do yeah. it. I mean, the cold plunging, what I, the other cool thing I love about it is it's like, it's a it's realistically, let's say you're plunging for three minutes. It's a five minute commitment yeah, out true. of your day that's to true. get that return. And I, you know, working out can give you that hopping into saunas in that category, you know, going for a big run, but yeah. it's like the time that you have to commit to those are, that's true. you know, are, are just different. So that's, that's a really good point. It's a really good point. That's the, out of all those things. It's the, I mean, you could even throw meditation in there, which is a mm -hmm. little bit longer practice, like all those things, but those things are all 30 hour minute type of deals where you're in there for three minutes it's and you get the benefits. Buzzing. Yeah. Every single time. Mm -hmm. So that's any, any uh, type of athlete that you see more than any, than other type of athlete. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming the high intensity, like hardcore is probably more likely. Yeah. We've, the moment. I mean, fitness in general, like that's been our crowd that, you mm -hmm. know, fitness influencers that have it. And then their followers have been like super into it. CrossFit's gaining some traction. Um, a lot of the, the CrossFit community, I think it's, it's been taking a little time, but the CrossFit athletes themselves, they've been like quick adopters mm -hmm. of this. I mean, they're, that's all they're doing is looking for one leg up in their sleep and their recovery. Mm -hmm. And so this has been, you know, whether it's, we have Tia Tumi using it, Justin Medeiros, Rich Froney, like they're all like all in on it. So that, that's a, that's a big crowd for us. Um, and then just like the regular people using it is just more of, yeah, like high performing, yeah. like people that are getting into it. Yeah. yeah here's, would, here's another, I mean, this is something I've done is I'll go, uh, I'll take <laughs> caffeine and I'll do my workout and about an hour and a half later or so you start to get it to dip a little bit and then cold. I feel like it gives me that bumps it back up or caffeine cold, go in the cold. When you come out, you're already energized in the caffeine hints. It's just like a nice little synergistic. I like that. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It's like, <laughs> I've always done caffeine. I like combining shit. So yeah. <laughs> do a little, do a little super hack right yeah, there. Yeah. yeah it's That's a, good a clean. I, the, the contrast that I love the most is cold to steam. Oh, if you have yeah. access to a steam room, yeah. mm -hmm. get cold, get your body. Like you, you can do a cold shower because most of that's in a locker room Yeah, or get in the cold plunge. It's the best. And then go sit in the steam and two minutes into your steam, you will have the most euphoric feeling. Yeah. Have yeah. you made it over there. to Refuge mm -hmm. in Carmel yet? I love Refuge. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's Dude, why you'll find me between those two rooms. So I live out there, right? That's what we do. We go out there all the yeah, time. I yeah, love yeah. that place. I moved out there because of the Refuge. So we used to like, yeah. <laughs> no way. I swear to God. Yeah. So my my wife and I, we, I mean, we lived here for most of the time and then we would drive over and stay at the Sanctuary, which is one of my favorite uh, hotels on the beach to stay at. 
And then you know, Refuge is literally 10 minutes up the road. And that was like a, a weekend thing. And we were staying there so much. It's not cheap to stay there. I looked at her. I'm like, you know, we ought to think about <laughs> renting a place out here because it's <laughs> literally, money. I'm, yeah, I'm paying. I think we save money by actually renting a whole house and just coming out here. And So you go every weekend? Uh, well, <laughs> since the pandemic, not really, because a lot of it like shut down and stuff like that. But, are they but, reopen uh, yet? They are. Yeah, yeah oh, they're, they're open back up I again. But, oh, yeah. No, I'm there all the time. I love that place. That place is. And for that exact. And they have all the different temperatures totally. and the colds. And, oh, yeah. I, that's, I go sauna. I've never found a place like that before. Yeah. I'm like sauna freezing. Sauna yeah. free. That's what I do yeah. back and forth. Yep. Yep. Right there. I mean, there's a couple of like, uh, there's, uh, what is it? Banya House in LA. There's Asha Urban Baths up in Sacramento. So some of these like kind of niche urban spots are taken off. But I mean, Refuge is built in. Yeah. I mean, the. the the landscaping is insane. Every bit of it. I've ne- yeah, I, every time we go somewhere, we always look for something like that. And I can never find something like that. That's like kind of out in nature like that. Has all the different pool. Totally. The vibe there is, is rad, dude. Yeah. So it's, that place There's is- a place in San Francisco called Banya, but it was weird because I went there and it's sauna, steam, cold, but it's co-ed naked. So I didn't, so you go in there and I'm like, what, why are like, there's men and women that are just naked in here. What's going to happen? Like what's going on? But it was, it was, it was fine. Like nothing what happened. What the other room look like? Yeah, yeah, dude. But I'm like, uh, I don't know. It's always like. any, like the nude, like once you get naked and it, it's like, oh, I'm com- I'm good. But there's always that initial shock. Yeah, yeah. Like anytime you like are For sure. walk into that For environment. Sure. Yeah. Well, good deal, man. Yeah. So, so looking forward. So sauna is the next big thing. You guys yeah. are growing more. Try and deliver faster to people. Like any anything else on the horizon? No, I think that's. I mean, really, that's a it. Lot we're. Right there. I know. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a monster right we, there. We just moved into our newest facility, so we're real excited on that. Teams growing. Um, You're you so know. close. We got to get out there. We'll have to come out, dude. You guys for yeah. sure have to come up. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, I, I'd love to see the going place. up Tahoe or whatever. Yeah, you're like, on the way. Through. You're on the yeah. way for us. All. In fact, we go up there next week, aren't we? On the yeah, yep. maybe we'll stop. So by. Sacramento. We're actually now the new facilities in Lincoln. Oh, I know where that is. So if you heading up 80, right off 65 over yep, there, about yep. 10 minutes, 15 minutes up the freeway. Yeah, that's right. Um, so yeah, we're we're growing. We're Sacramento proud company and, and doing our thing. So good Very deal, cool. man. Awesome. All right, right thanks on. for coming Dude, on the show, brother. Cool. Yeah, appreciate, appreciate it. Thank yeah. you.